All right, so I want to present Bullshark today. This is a joint work with Neil, uh, Alberto, and Lafteris, while we still were all happy and no novi. Wait, wait one second. This Zoom, this Zoom is killing me. But okay, never mind. I will manage. Okay, so uh, some backgrounds. Um, this is our journey of the DAG. We started with All You Need Is DAG, where we presented um, the theory, how can we solve atomic broadcast on top of a DAG with zero communication overhead. Then in novel, we show how to build a scalable, a scalable system, a scalable DAG for consensus. And Bullshark is the talk I'm going to present today. <laughs> so the two key observations from novel is, is the following. First, that in order to scale consensus, we need to decouple data dissemination from metadata, meaning that data, discrimina data dissemination can be done in parallel, completely orthogonal to the consensus engine. And in the consensus engine, we can, we can just order small metadata, which will scale any consensus. The other, the, other, the other contribution of Narvel is building a DAG in a very efficient way. And uh, basically, this is a DAG of messages. You can think of it, and each message has some information about transactions. It can be transaction itself, but it can also be a metadata about the transaction if you decouple metadata, uh, the data dissemination from the metadata. And each vertex on the DAG also links to nodes in the in, uh, vertexes in the previous round. Okay. So then we have all these protocols, DAG Rider, Task, Bullshark. Um, to take the DAG, you see the DAG, each, each one of the validators might see a slightly different view of the DAG because it's, it happens because of the asynchronous manner of the network. But the, the magic here that with, with zero communication over it, just by looking locally at your own DAG, every, all the validators can, can order the DAG totally and come up with the same order, um, which, which gives us the state machine replication that we desire. Okay, so for motivation, let's look at this figure from the novel paper. <laughs> so at the time, we were using hot stuff for our consensus. And uh, by our, our evaluation, we see that hot stuff can, the vanilla hot stuff, just the hot stuff, reg the regular hot stuff can, can do around 2,000 transactions per second. <laughs> so then we also try to, to enhance, enhance hot stuff with the observation that we can decouple data dissemination from consensus. And we okay, we got some improvements. So you see here around 50, 60K transaction per second. But still, when, when you go higher, and we actually confirm this in Aptos again now, when we go higher with the throughput, the leader is becoming the bottleneck again. So task, on the other hand, uh, on this graph, you can see achieves easily like over 150K transaction per second. And this is because task, task work directly on the DAG. So the DAG, the, the DAG helps to scale as well. However, the problem with task task is that uh, is that you pay latency. Hot stuff still has a better latency than task, and then okay, sure, you you want to have a, a much better throughput, but you need to trade you need to trade latency. So this is the motivation of the work because Bullshark is a protocol that um, that uh, task is an asynchronous protocol. Bullshark consider the uh, partial synchrony and improve latency. That's the goal. And we have two vari uh, variations of, of uh, Bullshark. The full paper has the asynchronous, still keeps the asynchronous consensus, but it adds uh, a fast path for this consensus. Uh, so in, in, when, in during synchronous periods, we can do fa things faster. And there is also a much practical and more simp simpler version, which is a standalone partial synchronous version. And this is the one I'm going to present today. Um, because it's it's actually very simple, and I this this talk is very short, but I'm actually going to try to present the entire protocol in five minutes. <laughs> so so let me let me dive into it. So we have a round based DAG. This is the DAG that is built by concept by Narvel. It was first introduced by Aleph, and the idea here is uh, we have this vertex. This is a round base. So we have at most n vertexes in each round. Each each validator can contribute one vertex per round. And uh, as I said, each vertex has information about transactions, and but as but also has n minus f links to vertexes in the previous round. Okay, so this is a round-based DAG, and in order to in, in order to move forward to the next round, I need to wait to n minus f vertexes in the current round. Then I create my my new node. I uh, add my new transactions there. I link to the n minus f rounds uh, vertexes from the previous round, and I move and I move forward. And this is how it works. Now. Now it's possible here that because of the asynchronous manner, uh, we, uh, each validator moves forward once he see once he see once he sees the first n minus f nodes. So at any given point of time, validators might see a slightly different local view of the DAG. But 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 important property that the DAG construction provides is non-equivocation. 
meaning that again, it's possible that validator four here sees the vertex that validator one doesn't see yet. <laughs> but if they both see the same vertex, that it's guaranteed that the vertex is exactly the same, the link, the contents, the transaction are exactly the same, the links are exactly the same. And by by and inductively, the entire causal history is exactly the same. So this is the non-equivocation and the we can think about it like as a reliable broadcast. We can get it easily by just reliably broadcast every no every node every node. And Novel has some efficient implementation of this. Okay, so now as I said, we have this DAG, and uh, locally, this is a local view of validator one, for example, and with a zero communication, I, validators don't need to talk to each other. They look at the DAG and it, and then they're gonna order it. So in order to order it, they are gonna interpret the DAG as a consensus protocol. So, so in every even round, there will be an M call and every, every odd rounds are going to be used for votes. And it's important here that the end calls, they are predetermined. It's like, think about it, maybe just in round robin, some mapping, it's predetermined. We all know that in, in, in round one, the, the node of validator two is going to be the end call. We don't need to, I don't need any communication for this. This is predetermined. It's similar like in, in, all, in the leader based protocols, you just know who is going to be the next leader. Okay, so um, so the goal here, we, we have this DAG, we have the predetermined encodes, and the goal is be to determine which encode to order and which one to skip. And, and this is where the consensus uh, logic is going to be. And once we, once we determine this, the rest is just the, uh, applying deterministic rule to order the causal histories of the encodes one by one. Again, because all the causal histories are the same, because this is what we get from the non equivocation property, is going to give us a total order. Okay, so let's see, let's see how we are gonna make sure that all validators are gonna order the same, order and skip the same encodes. Mm -hmm. So, so to this, we introduced the direct commit rule. Um, I remember, okay, so each, each even round, we have an encode, each odd round, we have votes, uh, potential votes. And we say that a, a vertex in a vote round votes for the encode if it simply has a link to it. Mm -hmm. So in this example, encode AY, a, sorry, A1 has one vote. And the, and the direct commit rule uh, says that you need F plus one votes in order, to, in order to be, sorry, directly committed. So in this example, uh, validator one in, in his local, in its local view of the DAG cannot directly order A1 because it's only, only have one vote. However, A2 has three votes, more than enough because F plus one here in this example is two. So A plus, uh, A2 can be directly committed by uh, validator one. Now, <laughs> Now, remember again that each local views of the DAGs might be slightly different at any given point in time, right? Eventually, they will all converge, but at any given point of time, they might be slightly different. So in this example, validator four already got the, the node from validator from itself, right? From validator four and round two. So in his local view of the DAG, A1 actually gets two votes, right? From validator two and from validator four. So A, validator four can directly commit validator two. But validator one skipped valid skipped encore A one right, um, yeah um, yes so so we need to be careful here and to make sure that uh, that when validator one order the encodes he will respect the same order so he has to he has to order A one encore uh, encore one before A two. Okay, so of course we are going to use quorum intersection for that. And the trick here is the following. <laughs> so as I said, we need F plus one votes in order to directly commit. And and by and the DAG construction is is requires requires every node every vertex to refer to n minus f vertexes from the previous round. Okay, I'm going to illustrate it in a second in a slide, but I'm um, just here. Just the conclusion from that is that if an encode A is directly committed, then all future encodes will have a path to at least one vote for A, which implies that all future encodes will have a path to A. Let's see it on the slide. <laughs> So here, validator four directly committed A one. It sees two two votes, right? Now let's see um, let's see this 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 next anchor A two. By the DAC construction, it has to refer to n minus f vertexes from round two. So here it already refers to two. Now it doesn't matter which which one is going to be the third one, 
either, either the, the vertex from validator four or the validator from validator two, each not, doesn't matter which one, it will have a link to a vote, right? This is just a quorum intersection between F plus one uh, um, votes to, three, uh, to N minus F uh, vertexes on the duck, uh, sorry, uh, links on the duck constructions. So A2 A1, A2 is, if, if A1 is directly committed, A2 will have a path to a vote, a link to a vote, and then and 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 so it have a, it will have a path to a1 and we're going to use this observation this is basically the main observation here that may help us uh, alter alter the diagram so what we conclude from that is the the opposite direction is that is that if there is no path from a future n called a prime to a then no honest validator directly committed a otherwise there would be a path as we just show uh, so in the previous slide Okay, <laughs> so with this observation in mind, I can I can explain the entire Bullshark protocol in, on, on one slide. So this is the DAG, this is a local view of some validator, say validator one, one okay? So this is how it goes. So first we try, uh, it, try, it tries to directly commit A1. There is only one vote, so it cannot directly commit A1. So it tries to directly commit A2. Again, the, again, there is a, there is the zero votes. A two is not even in the DAG, so so it, it, it doesn't. So now it tries to commit A three, and in this case, you see three votes, more than enough, and uh, it can directly commit A three. Good. Now it has to go and see whether it needs to commit A two or A one. It actually it checks whether it's possible that somebody else directly commit A two and A one. And the way we do it is the, with the observation from the previous slide. We're simply gonna check if there is a path between A three to A two. This path does not exist. So A two is, is it's safe to skip A two. Nobody could, uh, nobody directly commit A two. Right. However, there is a path from A3 to A1, so it's possible that some other validators directly committed A1 in his local view of the DAG. So we need to we need to order A, A1 before A3. Now, note here that it's possible that actually also possible that nobody directly committed A1. It's also possible, right? But it's fine. It's still safe because again, we're going to use the fact that all causal histories are exactly the same. So when validators were interpret uh, when when C A three in their local local view of the DAG, they're gonna apply the same deterministic rule to its causal history. So they're gonna run the same logic. They're gonna see that there is no uh, A two is not in the causal history of A three, but A one is in the causal history of A three because causal histories are the same across validators. And then they will come up with the same conclusion that they need to order A one before A three. Okay, so this is good. <laughs> And now we are going to continue this process recursively. So in this example, A1, A1 is the first encode, but imagine there are a few rounds before. So we had to continue the same and check whether there is a path between, between A1 to A0. And if it was a path, then, then we need to, uh, to order A0 before A1. This example, there is a, and we continue this process recursively until we reach a point which is already, which we already order, right? We keep going the bag, the bag and keep older it as we grow it. So um, um, we, will fin we, will we will finish this process once we get to an end call, which we already ordered. <laughs> okay, and the next, and, and the last process in this step is going to be to deterministically order all the causal history of the DAG. We will go end call by end call. We start by end, end call A1. Again, this is the first round, so there was no causal history to A1, so nothing to order. <laughs> but then the next end call that we ordered is A3. So we are going to look uh, on, the on, on the causal history of A3, and we are going to order it by some by applying some deterministic rule. Doesn't matter which rule, uh, as well as long as it's deterministic. And again, everybody see the same causal history. So by applying the same causal rule, they will they will end up with, in the same total order of the DAG. So to conclude this uh, bull shark, this uh, this was the entire protocol, the, the partially synchronous version. It is extremely simple. I hope I convinced you, even though I had only five minutes and I I I, I might went too fast for it. So I apologize, but still I hope you uh, you saw the simplicity here. <laughs> There is no view change, no view synchronization, nothing complex. You just build the DAG, you look at the local copy of the DAG and you order it, no messages, nothing. And when you build the DAG, you actually have a perfect load balancing because every, it's, everything is symmetric. Everybody just broadcasts their nodes, right? And the, the DAG also provide, the uh, Bullshark also provide the uh, chain quality, fairness and garbage collections, which I am not gonna talk about uh, of, uh, because I, I don't have much time today. 
Um, but just to conclude this talk, so the papers are uh, available online. There are two versions, as I said, there, there, is the SS, the, there is the CCS version, which is the asynchronous consensus with the fast path, um, with the fast path. And there is a standalone Bullshark protocol that in the partial synchronous version, this is the one I presented today. And this is the one that's already running in production in SWE. And currently we are implementing in an Aptos. Um, and uh, okay, if you if you wanna if you wanna learn more or see more details about it, you can check the blog post uh, where we describe both Narvel and Bullshark in more details. And just as a final note, as a teaser, I told you that we are trying to in this talk to improve latency, and uh, and we did. Bullshark actually improved the latency uh, and matched to the one of hot stuff. But in in Aptos, we are using Joltian, which is which is which is a faster protocol because it saves one one round compared to hot stuff. So we had to improve the latency even more uh, while while productionizing it, and we came up with some very cool ideas. So I encourage you to check our new paper, Hot from the Oven. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you need me, this is my email. Happy to collaborate always. And thank you for having me.